Are you planning to take USMLE step two, but you have no idea what resources to use or where to start from? Then this video is for you. What's up fellow sapiens and welcome to another eye-catching episode. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Neo and I am an international medical graduate from Cyprus. I took the USMLE step two this February and I got accepted for an ophthalmology residency in Israel at Hadassah Medical Center. The main reason I'm making this video is to help all the future step two takers to prepare for the exam, especially the international medical students and graduates, because a few months ago, I was in the same position you are now, and I know exactly how confusing it looks. I have done a lot of research and now I feel confident to show you how I did it and help you prepare for step two. I will divide this video into three main parts. First, I will talk about all the resources I have used to prepare for Step 2CK and I will explain to you what is it that I am using them for. Then I will walk you step by step on the 13-week full-time study plan. And last, I will finish off by talking about the self-assessments and I will mention when and in which order to take them. So sit back and enjoy. I have used seven different resources in total, and seven might seem a lot, but only two of them were used consistently throughout my preparation. The first resource is the learning software called Anki, and for those of you who are not familiar with it, Anki is a wonderful open source flashcards program. What I love about Anki is that it makes use of two important evidence-based learning techniques. The one is the so-called space repetition, which is when you get the same flashcard in different time intervals, like every two, three, four days, and you build a long-lasting memorization. The second one is the interleaving learning, which is when information and knowledge are all mixed up. So let's say that you do flashcards from different topics, like cardiology, nephrology, neurology, and so on, all in random order. This is called interleaving learning. These techniques of Anki make it a perfect tool to acquire information. And after all, Anki is the Japanese word for memorization. The deck I have used with Anki was the Zanki Step 2, which covers all Step 2 topics, biostats, med, neuro, OBG, pet, psych and surgery, except the social sciences. The flashcards in this deck are sorted out by topics and are mostly from UWorld, and contain pictures, tables and a detailed explanation. The second resource is the online meta videos with the legendary teacher Dr. Dustin. I love his videos because are taught in such a way that you get to create multiple associations which then helps in memorizing stuff easier. In every video you will find useful comments from other students, so take your time to go over them while he is talking and you can also speed up the videos as you wish. The downside in these videos is the lack of in-depth knowledge and this does not prepare you for the real exam. I only use his videos as a brief and fast way to get me started and remind me of the basics from each topic. Resources number 3, 4 and 5 were books. Number 3 is a step up to medicine which I have already read as a medical student so I was familiar with it and I used it mainly to cover medicine. Then, according to a self-assessment I took early in the course of my preparation, I had some weaknesses in psychiatry and OBG and I decided to get two more books. So number four was Psychiatric Clinical Clerkship and number five was Case Files Obstetrics and Gynecology. I found both books useful. Resource number six was a block of resources which I mainly use for social sciences. These were the Divine Intervention podcast and some websites about ethics, quality and safety and legal principles. The links to these sites are written below and the great benefit of podcasts is that you can use them while doing other things like walking or cooking. UWorld is undoubtedly the best resource, learning and exam preparation tool of all the resources I have mentioned. I have used it consistently, both in Tudor and test mode. At the time speaking, there are around 3,900 questions in their Q-Bank and they are constantly adding more and more. UWorld covers all topics extensively, even biostatics and social sciences, and it is the resource you should spend the most time with. I went over all the questions once, which I think is perfectly fine, and I did review all my flagged questions during the last week before the exam. All the resources I have mentioned are more than enough to prepare you for step two, but it doesn't mean that there are no more resources out there or these are the best ones. These resources are just the ones that I have found to be most beneficial in regards to my study plan. 
So I devoted 13 weeks in total, studying full time from 8 a.m. until around 8 9 o'clock in the evening with few breaks in between. And I am sure that many of you may not be able to dedicate a whole week or even a day to study so intensively. So you will need to plan your schedule accordingly and study during the weekends or after lectures. Out of these 13 weeks in total, I set the first eight weeks as a learning period, then the next four weeks as the practice period, and the last week as a review period to go through anything I wanted. My goal here was to go through all the topics, learn new stuff and build in-depth knowledge. Looking now at the first week, I had half a week to go through neurology and another half week to go through endocrinology and make the most out of it. By 6.30 I was up and I had one and a half hours for myself. By 8 a.m. I started studying through Anki. I began doing the flashcards that matched with the corresponding topic, which in this case was neurology cards and had the rest of them being suspended. I have a link below on how to suspend cards on Anki and please pay attention here. It doesn't mean that by Thursday, which was time to study endocrinology, I was over with all neurology flashcards. No, not even close. There are around 370 flashcards only for neurology, so by Thursday, which was time to study endocrinology, I might have done only 300 of them. And still, I am suspended and started doing the endocrinology ones as well. So every week, I gradually added a new topic according to my weekly plan. Moving on, by 9 o'clock I started watching the videos, studying anything extra I wanted from a book, and I did this approximately 4 hours in total. Then I had my lunch break for an hour and I continued with Anki flashcards for an hour or two, depending on how many flashcards I covered during the morning. Then I had 3 to 4 hours more before dinner to catch up with any extra material on the same topic and in the evening by 8 o'clock, if I had any energy left, I would have done more Anki flashcards. Every Wednesday and Saturday, I added around 20 UL questions in my schedule, in Tudor mode, from the same topic that I was studying that specific week. And at last, I dedicated my Sunday to doing UL questions but in test mode and again only on topics that I have read so far. To be honest, I started doing only one blog in the beginning because it took me ages to review it, but the more I practiced, the faster I became. So by the third week onwards, I ended up adding more blogs on Sundays and I was also able to do one more blog again in test mode on Thursdays. You just need to push in the beginning and then it becomes flawless. So basically, during these three days, you will not be able to learn by heart what you have read. You will not be able to study extensively each topic and the truth is that you shouldn't worry about it. During these three days or the amount that you decide to spend on each topic, you should, you should go through as much material you can study through different resources, create as many associations as possible, and you will encounter and learn everything later on through UL questions and Anki flashcards. So five key points to remember here are, set the timeline to finish a specific topic through your chosen resources. Every day do at least two hours funky cards. Wednesdays and Saturdays do around 20 UL questions in Tudor mode. Every Sunday test yourself with a blog or two in test mode and progressively add more topics in Anki and UWorld. And so far I have shown you the learning period where we get to create a good foundation of knowledge. Now let's move on to the practice period, weeks 9 to 12. I dedicate time to complete all the remaining questions in UWorld and only in test mode, as it will be in the real exam. I had approximately 2,500 remaining questions and I did around 2-3 blocks every day one after the other, and then I took my time to review all the questions and keep some notes if needed. A helpful tip here is to keep your notes either in Word or Pages, where you can easily dictate by using the microphone and save time. Also, it is much easier for you to go back to search and locate the note later on. Another good idea worth mentioning is the mnemonics. Mnemonics like general collapse after close car accident for agranulocytosis, or 5 Ps for acute interstitial nephritis are super helpful and you can always create your own. Also, it will be more suitable to plan your own personal schedule according to the remaining questions you have. Write down how many blogs are you able to do every day and every week and set the goal. The truth is that you need to have a plan, otherwise you will lose track and be left behind. 
Needless to say, I maintained doing my two-hour Anki flashcards as in the learning period, with the only difference being that I could answer the flashcards in a few seconds by now. So the key points for you to remember in this practice period is solve as many UL blocks as possible in test mode and continue with Anki flashcards. And finally, after 12 weeks of intense studying, here comes the last week. I was left with four days before taking step two on Friday. The first three days, I went over any flat questions and some high yield topics to refresh my memory. And the day before the exam, I decided not to study, but instead, I took some time to rest. So I just went for a walk and prepared my stuff for the exam day. So that's my study plan, arranged in three periods, learning, practice, and review. And before I move on to a really important section, the self-assessments, allow me to say that I have seen many study plans and I am confident that this is realistically one of the best. This is because you first dedicate time to learn and build strong foundation of knowledge through different resources. You gradually add more and more topic questions in URL and Anki, with an eventual smooth transition from Tutor mode to Test mode in the practice period. A perfect combination of intensive learning making use of space repetition and interleaving learning that ultimately prepares you for the step two exam. I took the first UL self-assessment at the end of the sixth week just to see in what situation I was in and I scored 214. I recommend that you don't leave all self-assessments for the end but instead use them wisely and take one of them as early as I did around the sixth week. It doesn't matter what you score here, it is meant to get a low score since you haven't even finished studying yet. But the idea is that you sacrifice self-assessment for the sake of the real exam, just to get to know your weaknesses and strengths and where to pay attention to. Then I took my second self-assessment, which was the NBME number 7, four weeks before the exam and I scored 238. And two weeks before the exam, I took NBME number 8 and I scored 248. And last, I took the second UL self-assessment five days before the exam and scored 254. The best predictor for the step two is the second UL self-assessment, even though UL is not supposed to be used as an assessment tool. But now, they have retired NBME forms number seven and eight, and they have created new updated NBME forms numbers nine, 10, and 11. From some research I did, it is best to take the NBME forms by ascending order 9, 10, 11 and somewhere in between take the first UL assessment and leave for the end few days before the exam the most predictive one which is the second UL self-assessment. There's a lot of information in this video and I hope you were able to catch most of it but let's do a quick recap. So during the first eight weeks I used online medical videos and the books Step Up to Medicine, Psychiatric Clinical Clerkship, and Case Files OPG to go through all the topics in Step to CK. In addition, every Wednesday and Saturday, I did around 20 UL questions in tutor mode of the corresponding subject, and every Sunday, I did one to three blocks of cumulative questions in test mode. And on top of that, every day I did at least two hours of funky flashcards, and suspending each matching topic every time and eventually mixing up all cards together. Weeks from 9 to 12, I did 2-3 blocks per day in UWorld, random and test mode, and I also maintained doing Anki cards daily, and I spent the last week reviewing anything I wanted. And that's my 13-week plan which helped me obtain my ophthalmology residency, and I am sure it will help you as well. Remember that you can always change this plan according to your own needs. Please comment below and let me know what are your thoughts on my plan, what do you think I should have done better, add or subtract a resource, and let's create a helpful discussion for future step 2 takers to see. And if you want to know how much does it cost for an international medical graduate to take step 2, you can watch my video on step 2 expenses. So thank you for your time, hope you enjoyed this video and I will appreciate it if you press the like button and subscribe, and see you next time!